Hello, church. It's confirmation today, and we're so glad that you're here with us digitally. We have so much to celebrate. If you are worshiping with us at the Facebook premiere, drop a little comment in there. Tell us where you're worshiping from. If you're on YouTube, let us know that you've checked in and just tell us where you're joining us from, even just in your city. Tell us how you're doing after the hurricane. Uh, we just want to know that you're doing okay. And um, we, we have very special music today to help celebrate confirmation and the profession of faith of these new members. And so will Carlos tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's a very special treat for confirmation this weekend. And uh, we have members of our youth group, the youth band Room 205, uh, will be performing the special music for today. And they are Sidney Ramon, who will be a sophomore at Texas A&M University. Evie Martinez, who will be a freshman at Texas A&M Kingsville, and Stephen Dillon, who will be a junior at McAllen High School. We are so glad you're with us in worship today. So glad you're here, even across the distance, to celebrate the profession of faith of these young people. It's a glorious day to be in worship. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 27. Listen or read along with us as we read the psalm together. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path. I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Amen. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Hi, kids. I'm so glad to be worshiping with you all today. Have you ever been afraid to speak up? Did you know that God can use you through the words you say to shine his love light in the world? A long time ago, there was a little girl who lived in Israel. She and her family believed in the one true God. One day, she was taken away from her home to a place far away. I wonder how it felt to be far away from her family in a new land. She lived with a man named Naaman and his wife. Naaman was a commander of the army, and he had won many battles against the people in Israel. The girl would help Naaman's wife do all kinds of things around their home, like sweeping the floors and cooking the meals. God was right there with her, just as he was when she was with her family in Israel. But there was this one thing that really worried her. You see, Naaman had a terrible skin disease that they called leprosy. She must have talked to God about it. You know, it's really good to talk to God about your worries. One day, when she was helping around the house, God told her in her heart what she needed to tell Naaman so that he could be well and clean. She told Naaman's wife that he needed to go to Elisha. God's prophet in Samaria. God would help Naaman through Elisha. And guess what? Naaman listened to the little girl. After talking to a couple of kings and being kind of stubborn, he finally ended up following Elisha's instructions to wash seven times in the Jordan River. And it worked. He was made well. The best part is that after that, he knew of the power of the one true God. All because the little servant girl was brave enough to speak up and to shine God's light of love to Naaman. You can shine God's light of love and forgiveness to others too. Don't be afraid. You might be the light in their darkness. And if you aren't sure how, just ask Jesus. He will show you. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.
Today, as we come into a time of prayer, let's pray for our confirmants, taking this amazing step of faith, and let's close with the Lord's Prayer. If you know the Lord's Prayer by heart, then you can say it along with me, either silently or out loud, however you feel. Um, but let's go to the Lord now in prayer. God, I thank you so much for each of these confirmants for their journey of faith and how this is a turning point in their lives today. I pray that you would be with them in all the days that are ahead, helping their witness to shine out for you, helping their faith to grow ever stronger, pulling them closer day by day as they grow. As they grow older, may they also grow wiser in you. And when we pray, Lord, that you would as we listen to their profession of faith, that you would renew and rekindle that spark within us of the moment or the day when we came to faith, uh, when we made public declarations that we belong to you. Uh, help us also to grow in that bond and that love for you and in our walk and our journey with you. Pull us ever closer. And together as a church, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to our time of offering this morning, we remember that this is one way that we can give back to the Lord a portion of all that he has given to us. Through our tithes and offerings, we support the ministries that are, are able to be done through this congregation as we feed the hungry, as we clothe the naked, as we uh, help take care of those that are in, in great need. Uh, so please be a part of the, the ministry of this church. Please give back to God a portion of all that God has given to you at this time.
scripture today is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the, the best day, one of the best days of my life was also one of my worst hair days. Worst fashion day overall, period. The day I was confirmed. The day you are guaranteed that everyone, your church, your family, your extended family, is going to take a picture of you and cherish it and keep it. That's the day that's immortalized <laughs> as one of my worst fashion choice days. Here's a picture. It's 1989, Confirmation Sunday, and my hair and bangs are loudly proclaiming that they are not ready for the 80s to be over. Around me is my 1989 family. They seem to be making a lot less cringy choices than I was. Um, they're not digging in as hard to the 80s. And as much as this picture, I'm just embarrassed to show it to you, I'm also delighted to show it to you. Because I made a lot of bad choices about my hair and my dress that day. But I made a choice that changed my life that day. For all those smaller, um, embarrassing choices. I keep these pictures because they remind me of that one shining choice that changed the trajectory of my life. That was the day I stood to say, I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Confirmands, I want to speak to you for a minute here. Because when you were baptized in this church, or when you just joined, uh, when your parents joined, this they, if it was a baptism, your godparents, if you had them, the whole congregation, whether it was a baptism or just a joining, everyone made a promise to you. They promised that they would let faith shine out of their lives so that you could see it, so that you could learn from them. What does it mean to be a follower of Christ? How do you live? How do you give? How do you serve? How do you treat other people? That is the gift that this congregation has been giving you all your life. They've held you when you were a baby, some of them. When you were screaming your head off, they took you and rocked you and told you it was going to be okay while your parents went to worship for that one hour of blessed silence. They've taught your Sunday schools as you've grown over. They've answered all your questions. Even when they seemed a little silly or crazy, the members of this church have answered those questions. They've taken a week off from their jobs in the summer, not to go on vacation, but to teach your vacation Bible school. Some of them, saints, have, as you've grown up, done an all-night youth lock-in, I'm sure, and stayed awake all night so that you could have that learning and growing and fellowship experience. Others have slept on airbeds so that you go, could go to a choir camp or serve on a mission team or travel to a youth rally. We have loved you. We have let you look at our lives for how faith changes us. We've tried, imperfect people that we are, because we're all imperfect. We have tried to let you press your faces against the windows of the lives of the members of this congregation, and now I offer you that gift too. Um, all of our lives to say, this is imperfectly what it means to be a follower of Jesus. But today, today you're not just a face at the window. Today as you walk up to the front of the church, you will proclaim to this entire church family that you are choosing Jesus. That you are choosing Jesus. That you're going to be one of his followers. I, I just got chills saying that. We are so excited that you are giving your lives to the Savior of the world. And you're going to do, after you've done that, after you've joined God's family, you're going to join our church family. And we don't ask you teenage vows. We don't water it down. When you join the church, you take the same vows every adult here took. 
when they joined the church. And so today, you walked in in the eyes of the church as a child, and you're going to leave as a full member, fully part of this body of Christ, just like every other adult here. And even more, you came in having had vows taken for you, right? Your parents said for you that they had faith. They wanted this for you. But today, you're saying you want it yourself. You're saying that before God. I want to be part of your family, God. That changes your life. So a brief word about the vows that you take as you become a member here. If you were at that service day that we had earlier um, to help feed 350 families, then Confirmands, you heard me say that we have five vows when you join the church. You make God five promises. To support God's ministry through this church with your prayer, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your story. And I told you that day that prayer is an hour a week. You're promising to God. Ten minutes every day, and on Sunday we all pray together. But every day you're promising to make prayer and talking to God a pattern in your life. Just ten minutes. To pray for yourself, your family, this church community, and our larger community. You're promising to be present. That's another hour a week. And y'all, it used to be really straightforward. It would be come to church, be in worship, be fed, be here for other people. And it will be again. I hope very soon. It will be in person again someday. But in the meantime, being present means connecting online and chatting online and getting up maybe for a premiere, right? For a Facebook premiere or a YouTube premiere. And joining in the community that way, going to youth group when you gather via Zoom, being present and saying, you know, a pandemic's not going to stop me from being present. Giving to just start on the path to generosity. It may not be much right now, but whatever jobs you have, whatever you make, to say, God, I want you to build generosity into my life, this pattern, and to give 10% of what you have back to the Lord for work in this community. Serving, that's another hour. Um, so there's three hours. There's praying for an hour, being in worship for an hour, or being in a study for an hour, and then serving for an hour. And I told you as we were serving together that it can be anywhere. Find the place where the gifts that God has given you meets the needs of the world, okay, and serve there. Um, serve for one hour outside yourself. When we all do that, when all 700 members of this church, active members, do that, our community is transformed by just one hour. And then story. Um, that's the vow that a lot of folks call witness. But when I say witness, especially to teens, I, they often picture grabbing a Bible and shouting on the street corner. And what God wants more of is the story of your life. What, what has God's love done for you? How is prayer changing things? A lot of the way you are going to proclaim your story doesn't mean you're going to be preaching a sermon. It's how you live with faith. It's your character. It's the way you carry yourself in the world and the choices that you make. And I'll tell you that in this pandemic, giving God your story is one of the most powerful things you can do because everyone is ragged and worn down and we need hope. And if you let the love of Christ shine through you, when you do that, when that's the story that your life is proclaiming, then it's like people who've been scratching at the door in the darkness see that ray of light. Oh, you have something different. You know, what a witness. And I'm going to tell you that now that you're taking these vows in just a few minutes, it changes how uh, we look at you. Not, no longer a face pressed up at the windows of other people's lives. But you're inviting the world and this church to say, you can learn from me about what faith looks like lived out. And you have people watching you. I'm the mother of a three-year-old, and I've, I have two teens, and I can tell you, these kids... The little kids are always watching the teens, looking up to you. 
They want to be just like you someday. And that's a sacred responsibility that God's giving you to show them what it means to live out your faith. And even more, when you give an hour to serve, when you're out in the community rebuilding or helping with food or distributing or sorting things, when the world sees young people, teenagers, choosing to spend their time in those ways, that is a powerful witness. It's perhaps even more powerful than when adults do it. When you see young people, that makes everyone in the world go, hey, what is going on in their life that they're being so selfless? So think about that amazing position just because of your age and that influence that you have and pray about how God would have you use it to expand his kingdom. I want to show you, uh, in closing, one more picture from Confirmation 1989. Only this is from my friend Sujatha. Sujatha is from India, and we met in seminary. And I recently told her via Facebook that we were going to have confirmation despite this pandemic. And we found out, we had thought we were confirmed the same year, but we found out it was the same year. And she sent me a picture, because I showed her my uh, embarrassing picture. And she sent me this picture, and she said, this is embarrassing too. But I think Sujatha looks amazing in this picture. And I don't know how the 80s didn't affect India like they did the United States, but no matter. Um, what I want you to see in this picture is that all the way on the other side of the world, there were people my age in 1989 professing their faith in Christ. This year, 2020, there are people all around the world that are your age that are declaring their faith in Christ. They're in India and Africa and Russia and Brazil. They're all over the world. And the pandemic isn't stopping them from making this declaration. And so I want you to know that you're not just joining the group of people that is God's children here at First United Methodist Church. You're joining a worldwide community of faith, right? And a community that stretches back through time and forward to a time that we won't get to see, an eternal community. So I want you to do me a favor today. I want you to take a picture and save it. Save it digitally, print it out if you can, and make a note of what today means to you. Make a note next to it or on the back of it, what it means. Because we will remember 2020, the world will, as a brutal, crushing, awful year. But you're already changing the story. Because despite a pandemic, despite a hurricane, it hasn't stopped you from coming up here in just a few minutes to declare your faith in Jesus Christ. That yes, 2020, it's the worst year we've seen in decades. But this is also one of the best because it's the year you became part of God's family. And it's the year we welcomed you into our church family. And it is an amazing blessing to us, an amazing ray of sunshine in a year that has been hard. So hold on to it so that when you face hard times in the future, you can remember, hey, the stuff in the world doesn't get the last say. That God is doing amazing things, even in the heart of the hardest years. And know that we are so, so excited and proud of you. Church, through the sacrament of baptism, we become part of the global community of believers. Our lives are woven into the continuing story of God's work on this earth. And we celebrate our rebirth in Christ. All of this rich richness is God's gift to us. Through confirmation, we declare our faith in God. We claim the promises of our baptism. We acknowledge what God is doing in our lives, and we become part of the church. Today, we have young people who are coming to make their professions of faith, to declare that they choose to be followers of Jesus, that they have studied, they have prayed, and they're choosing this life of faith for themselves. What a joy to celebrate with them today. 
So compromise. We have some questions for you. These are the questions we've talked about. These are the profession of faith. And so on behalf of the whole church, the church that is represented here and the church that's digital right now, I ask you, will you turn away from the evil in this world and from your own sin? And if you will say yes, are you ready to, to call on God's power so that you can resist evil in all of its forms? Is Jesus your savior? Do you trust in his grace and desire to serve him alongside other believers of every age from all races and nations? As God helps you, will you remain faithful members of the church? Will you faithfully support this community of faith with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and story? And Caleb and Cassidy, do you wish to be baptized in this faith? Church, you are the body of Christ. Will you, those who are in the virtual world and those who are present here, will you stand alongside these confirmands and declare again your own rejection of sin and commitment to Christ? Will you? Yes. yes. Will you continue to support each other and include these confirmands in that ministry? Yes. yes. Will you let your lives reveal Christ to others? Yes. yes. Will you show love and forgiveness to these confirmands so that in this community, they find a place of acceptance and growth? Yes. Amen. So friends, throughout time, God has worked through water. There's amazing stories of deliverance through water. The water of the Red Sea is what delivered the people from slavery to the journey to the promised land. The water of the Jordan River, it was flooding, and God tore it apart so the people could get into the promised land. And then in baptism, we are given the example of the greatest deliverance ever, which is that we are delivered from our sin. We are delivered from death, and we are given new life. And so that is what the sacrament of baptism is, and God uses ordinary water, just ordinary water, just like God uses ordinary people, people like you and me, um, to do incredible things. So as this water washes away our sin on the inside, so too can ordinary people be used by God in amazing ways. So let's pray a blessing over this water and, and those who will receive it. God, would you pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here, on all of us gathered virtually, and on this gift of water. Use it to wash away sin. May you give to Caleb and Cassidy the new clothes of right living, that they may live as your disciples all their days. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 And you can kneel and we'll let your parents get up. Caleb, this is such a special day because it's not just your confirmation, it's your baptism, becoming part of God's family and this church family. So I baptize you, Caleb Trevino, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And if you put your hands on him now. May the Holy Spirit work within you, Caleb, that being born by water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You're confirmed. He stands up as the newest member of the church. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, Caleb. <laughs> Cassidy, this is such a special day. It's your baptism and your confirmation. And so I just invite you to incline your head, um, kind of lean over a little bit. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And lay your hands on her shoulders. Cassidy, may the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Welcome to God's family. Welcome to the church. <laughs> she stands up as our newest member. It's amazing. And she gets a towel. There you go. Put our hands on his shoulders. I'll take his hand. Aiden, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ all your days. Amen. 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 Congratulations on your profession of faith. Hey. Yeah. Here you go, brother. Okay, now just touch her shoulder while I touch her hand, her head. Sarah, may the Holy Spirit work within you, mm -hmm. that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Arise, the newest member of our church.
Okay, and then just hang around because it's John next. <laughs> John, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Congratulations, y'all. Okay, I'm not. Everybody make sure you can touch your sister, okay? Amari, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Congratulations. Thanks. Welcome. Okay, Kate. Okay. Kayla, may the Holy Spirit work within you, mm. that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Arise, the newest member of our church. Jaden. Okay. Jaden, may the Holy Spirit work within you, mm. that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Arise. Welcome Jayden. to the church family. Jaden. There you go. Hi, Emma. Emma. Okay, Emma, so you're just going to feel my hands upon you, okay? And all of your family is going to put their hands on you right now. We're going to pray together. Emma, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. We're so excited for you, and we have a certificate when we see you next. Yes. Okay. How do y'all feel? Yeah? The Holy Spirit's working within you now. I mean, there's no telling. You know, the Spirit's always at work, but when we invite the Spirit to work in our lives, it changes things. You know, the Spirit is powerful and gives us strength and courage and expands our witness. Um, so I want to welcome you, and I want to tell the families and the larger church that before you stand the newest members of God's family, and many of them now members of our church family. And they knelt as children, but when they rose, they rose as full members of this church, of God's family, of this church's ministry. So do all in your power, church, to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and to allow them to grow in God's love. The God of grace, who has called you through Christ, strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that your life, that your lives come from man's will be ones of grace and peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Choices matter. The choice that these confirmands made today affects the trajectory of their lives. May we look at them and be reaffirmed in our commitment to choose Jesus over and over and over so that we can live life at his side and so that we can change the world together. Amen. <laughs>